Hello guys, my name is Larry and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to go over a topic that I get a lot of questions and uh, I'm going to try to answer some of those questions uh, with this video. We're going to be working on a GE Powermark Gold Load Center. We also consider this to be uh, what they call a, a sub-panel. Uh, the regular panels normally have a big breaker up here at the top that controls everything that's down below it. And you'll have a neutral bar on this side and a ground bar on this side. This one has, you know, your two load wires. And, of course, you're going to have a neutral bus bar over here. And you can use it as a ground bus bar as well. Uh, I don't recommend it. It's not uh, the way I like to do things. So in this situation, I would use this as my neutral. And uh, actually go back over here. I would use it as my ground. And if you wanted to add a ground bus bar, you could do that. Something similar to this. However, this is not the correct one for that. You see over here, you've got two screws. Let me get a pin here so I don't cover the hole up. You got one here. Two screw holes. So you could actually put your bus bar on the side if you wanted to. They've got one, like I said, on this side. Now, a lot of people don't understand how the breakers go into the box. They don't understand how the, how the box functions. I'm going to try to cover those topics as well. Uh, they don't know what this is. They don't know what a ground bar is. I'll try to discuss those as well. Uh, keep in mind that if you're playing with electricity, just remember that it will kill you. Make sure you do turn the main breaker off when you're running that wire or tying wire into this cell panel. Uh, currently has no power to it. I've just got it on the desktop here with the board at the top, kind of getting an angle to it so that you can see better as to what I'm doing on the inside. Now, to give you a little explanation, and I wish I'd have brought some wires in there to do it, but I'll try to go through it slow enough where you can understand it. Your wires would either come in from the side, the top, maybe in the bottom, or maybe on this. Uh, well, you got one, two, three sides with knockouts in them. <coughs> what I mean by knockouts, these right here. See some right here. These are your knockouts. You knock knock these out to put a fitting in there to run the wire through <clears throat> and uh, secure the wire in there and keep it, anything from getting inside the, the wire in the box itself. Now, in this situation, you're going to need the wires. To come, we're going to come in from the top. This is where the wires are going to be attached to initially. So what you're going to have is, let me see if I can get a marker here and I'll write it on there. This leg is 120. This leg is 120. I know I'm in the way. So you're going to have 120 volts coming in here. You're going to have 120 volts coming in here. Well, let's make sure I've got this thing here. No matter where you see it, I moved it around a little bit there. All right. So coming in from the top of the box which is where our wires will be coming in, right through here. We would come in, you pull your 120 leg here, your 120 leg here. You can run your neutral over here, or you can run your ground. I prefer running my neutral over here. I like to run a separate ground lug on this side and ground it by itself. Now, I've seen in many of installations, they put live leg, live leg, 120, 120, come over here and reground this this side and run their grounds and their their neutral on the same bus bar is it legal I don't know uh, I don't read all the codes on stuff I just know how I've hooked up my stuff in the past and it's worked fine so let's say we're coming in right here with 120 you're gonna have let's say we're running a, a four wire setup and you do have a say you got one of these over here the correct one that's gonna be your copper wire it's bare. That's your grounding wire. Make sure it's grounded to the box and the box is grounded outside of there also. And say you got a white, a black, and a red wire. Now the white is normally neutral. So the white wire you'd come over here to one of these grounding lugs. On this, this wood wire slide in here to the side. Now you just take these screw loose and you slip that wire in off right there to the side of it and tighten it back down. For those of you who don't know nothing about wiring. So you're going to have your white wire going here. You're going to have a, 
a black and a red and it doesn't make any difference which one you put across there black or red it doesn't make no difference vice versa red or black you're going to get 120 120 ground and neutral some of you can probably get by and i don't recommend it red and black ground wire red black ground wire neutral other scenario red black neutral white wire over here bare ground wire make sure it's grounded now understanding the inside of this is what's confusing to a lot of people say for instance we have 120 coming in on this side right here okay that's going to feed this entire area right there all right then it's going to jump up and it's going to feed what you see right here and it's going to jump up here it's going to feed what you see right here so you only got these two plates going up on the other side you got 120 coming in it's going to feed there and it's going to feed there so that's 120 that's 120 on this side this side is 120 here and here only if you're just working on a 110 volt circuit and you got a breaker just like you see right here this is a GE it's a GE load center all you got to do and I'm working from the side which is kind of a little confusing for me snap that baby in there just like so and mash it down and lock it in place and if you see here it's only catching on these little ears right here so you're pulling power from this leg through this breaker of course your wire would come out right here and go to whatever the appliance you're trying to power up in the event it overloads from power from here to whatever the source is that you're trying to power up coming out here this breaker is designed internally to trip at a certain temperature a certain heat or a certain degree now, I can't explain that how that works. I'm not a rocket scientist. So recap. Make sure that it's in the slots right there. And they are kind of temper temperamental to push in. Okay. You, you feel it snap in there just like so. And hopefully I got this where you can see it. It's tapped into this leg right here. So now if we were to put another breaker on this side, like so, in the top section you'll be able to get this other side of this ear right here. I'm trying to do it. I'm putting my big old bulky head in front of the camera. Okay. So now we got this set up. The breaker's turned off. We could come in here and put our wire on this side and the wire on this side. We could power a light switch, a wall receptacle, a uh, plug, anything that's going to take uh, something that uses 15 amps or less because this is a 15 amp rated breaker. Keep in mind that you must always rate your breakers to whatever the source is. In other words, if you've got a couple of plugs on the wall, you, you just don't want to go 15 or 20 amps max. Depending on what, how you have this set up will dictate what size breaker you need here versus the source that it's going to be pulling the power from. Now let's pull these out of here. I hope you got that figured out for you. A single breaker. It's good for a 110 volt circuit, 120, whatever you want to call it, maximum 120. Now let's say we're going to put a hot water heater on this thing. And say this is only a, a 50 amp supply box. I'm not sure what the rating was on this one, but I'm pretty sure it's somewhere around that. 50, 60, it might even tell you here somewhere. If not, it'd be in the bottom, and I'll look that up later. But let's say we're going to power up a, a hot water heater. You're going to need to get 240 volts out of that. You're going to have to have a double pole breaker. Single, double pole. Now, to make the 240 work with, say, a compressor, a hot water heater, anything that's using 240 volts, even a big giant wind air conditioner that you're going to need 240 volts for, or 230, they call it. Uh, you're going to need to combine 120 on this side and 120 on this side. So what you're asking me, where did I put the breaker? 
let me explain in order to get 240 you're going to need to combine these two 120 and 120 <clears throat> makes 240 so you're going to need to make sure you jump her this leg to one of these legs this leg to this leg this leg to this leg or this leg to this leg and I'll explain to you let me get a closer shot of the breaker that's a GE breaker see we're going to have to put it here here and there's where your wires are going to come out there and there you're going to get 120 out 120 out so equal, equal 240 but now to install this in the breaker box if we were to put it say for instance right here okay that would work fine because remember what I stated earlier this is the same scenario up here where we got the breaker so you're pulling 120 from this side and you're going to pull 120 from this side that's 240 so now when you put your wiring in right here into the breaker and tighten the screws down turn that on you're going to have 240 volts coming out the end of it where the wires go in it pull it back out so you can see again we combine this one with this one so this one is 120 on this side we're combining it with this one 120 on that side so 120 120 equals 240 you got a say a 50 amp breaker which for illustration purposes it'll only be a 30 on a hot water heater pulling two 4500 watt elements say a ring uh let's see um yeah ring 4500 watt hot water heater so yeah 30 30 amp breaker will pull that with no problem but that's how we combine it folks jumper jumper double pole single throw well i'm not sure if i helped a lot of y'all out but I uh, hope I helped a few out. I know I put a video of something similar to this out a oh, months ago and had a lot of questions, a lot of answers to, to answer. Um, I'm actually going to be installing this, this breaker box here pretty soon or this sub panel pretty soon. And what a sub panel is, I should have explained that earlier, but I didn't. You're going to have your main breaker coming into the home, wherever it might be, the main breaker box, which is something like mine has 32 uh, breaker slots. Now you would have to allow, say, a 200, 200 amp supply if you're going to pull 50 amps off of that. Remember, you're going to pull 50 off of that, so it's going to leave you 150 to work with in the home. So in this situation here, you would want to limit the amount of voltage amps draw that you're going to have out of it. Now I know that you're not going to have every single one of these on at one time. So for instance, if you're running a hot water heater off of here you would not want to put another double 30 60 which 30 and 30 will make 60 amps on a 50 amp supply on a sub panel it just would not make any sense you'd have some issues so keep in mind that if you're going to run one double at 30 and this is a 50 amp you don't want to exceed the limit uh you could run say a couple of 15 amps and 130 when the hot water heater's not on the other ones would draw you need to balance that out yourself depending on the equation or situation well, anyhow, guys, I hope this video helped you to, to some extent. Uh, post your comments and questions down below. Hit the like, subscribe button. We need all the help we can get. We've got several other videos out there that might be interesting to you. So stick around for our next video. Uh, again, like and subscribe. Thumbs up. We appreciate you watching the video. Thank you.